Welcome friends as a part of lecture series on environmental sciences today i am going to discuss the topic urban problems related to energy let us start with the simple definition of urbanization urbanization is the process by which large numbers of people become permanently concentrated in relatively small areas forming cities the degree of urbanization has increased tremendously two factors has lead to urbanization a first is pull factor and another is push factor pull factor these are those factors which attract the person for availability of employment like more income best education and many more while as push factors are those factors which force the person to migrate from their house due to circumstances in india and all other developing countries urbanization is due to pull factor now coming to the causes of urbanization as we know urbanization has become a common feature of indian society growth of industries has contributed to the growth of cities as a result of industrialization people have started moving towards the industrial areas in search of employment this has resulted in the growth of towns and cities various reasons have led to the growth of urbanization which includes industrialization industrialization is a major cause of urbanization as it has expanded the employment opportunities so rural people migrated to cities on account of better employment opportunities second is social factors many social factors such as attraction of cities better standard of living better education facilities need for status also induce people to migrate to cities third is employment opportunities in rural sector people have to depend mainly on agriculture for their livelihood but indian agriculture is dependent on monsoon in drought situations or natural calamities rural people have to migrate to cities in search of food then they prefer to stay there than in rural areas fourth is modernization urban areas are characterized by sophisticated technology better infrastructure communication medical facilities and many more so people feel that they can lead a comfortable life in cities and thus migrate to cities now coming to the problems relating urbanization since in our country urbanization is unplanned due to uncontrolled migration due to unplanned urbanization india is facing too much problems such as unemployment electricity problems pollution social problems improper sanitation facilities and many more rapid rise in urban population in india is leading to many problems like increasing slums decrease in standard of living in urban areas and also causing environmental damage now coming to the factors which contribute to urbanization three main factors are contributing to urbanization that is industrialization transportation and social economic factors now let us move towards the urban problems which are related to energy energy is one of the major pillars of economic development of the society and economic growth along with the growing population will obviously consume a lot of energy houses in urban areas are now made of more heat sensitive materials such as metals which include iron steel aluminium glass and concrete instead of heat insensitive substances such as wood and brick so consumes lot of energy to make these houses comfortable we use air conditioners or room heaters run by electricity hence use of energy high rise buildings need energy to operate lifts and electrical energy for lighting most urban people use their individual transport rather than a public one similarly each and every step 
in an urban center needs energy in some form or the other. To meet the enormous energy needs and for long-term sustainability, we should be more specific about the most efficient and cost-effective manner of energy use. Energy is an essential need of a man wherever he lives, in urban or in rural society. In urban areas, the need of energy is increasing by leaps and bounds. Take the case of mega-urban dwelling places. Vehicles, both petrol and diesel engine driven, are seen flowing like floods. These vehicles run with a basic input called oil, which is one of the most important forms of energy. According to the estimate, the worldwide demand for energy will be more than double by the year 2020. Moreover, countries use energy in an uneven manner in the world. Some countries use more energy while many others use less. In developed countries, the amount of energy used is much more compared to underdeveloped developing countries. Industrialized Developed countries use energy for various purposes, such as for residential and commercial purposes, industrial purposes, and transportation. Let us first discuss residential and commercial purposes. The amount of energy required for residential and commercial use varies greatly throughout the world. The economics of energy consumption describe that a country with high GNP, that is gross national product, roughly known as national income, use less per capita energy for residential and commercial needs. 30% energy used in North America and 90% used in India is for residential and commercial purposes. Reason is very simple. North Americans use ACs that's air conditioning systems, refrigerators, water heating, and space heating. So, 75% energy is used in these gadgets. In India, almost all of the energy used in home is for cooking due to scarcity and high cost of fuel. About half of the energy demand in Africa is for cooking because they use an open fire instead of stoves. Using more efficient stoves instead of open fires could reduce these energy requirements by 50%. Now, energy use in industry. The industrial sector uses more delivered energy than any other end use sector, consuming about one half of the world's total delivered energy. The industrial sector comprises a diverse set of industries, including manufacturing industries, which includes food, paper, chemical industries, refining industries, iron and steel industries, non-ferrous metal industries, non-metallic mineral industries, and many others. While as non-manufacturing industries includes agriculture industries, mining industries, and construction industries. The mixture and intensity of fuels consumed in the industrial sector vary across regions and countries, depending on the level and mix of economic activity and technological development, among other factors. Energy is consumed in the industrial sector for a wide range of purposes, such as processing, assembly, producing steam, cogeneration, heating, air conditioning and lighting in buildings. Industrial sector energy consumption also includes natural gas and petroleum products such as naphtha and natural gas liquids used as feedstocks to produce non-energy products such as fertilizers for agriculture and petrochemicals for the manufacture of plastics. Thus, it is important to note that industrial energy consumption differs significantly from that of other sectors, particularly residential and commercial, such as for electricity. The industrial sector is relatively less dependent on purchased electricity than the commercial. 
and residential sectors since it produced a significant fraction of its own power through direct fuel inputs and some industries through cogeneration. A form of cogeneration is combined heat and power which produces thermal and electric energy from a single fuel source. Second is petroleum products. Petroleum products represent a larger fraction of industrial energy inputs than those of the commercial and residential sectors. However, a large fraction of consumption is not for fuel use but rather as raw material for petroleum refining and chemical manufacturing. Third is natural gas. In the industrial sector, natural gas represents a significant fraction of total energy consumption than for other sectors. In addition to fuel use, natural gas is also an important raw material in industries such as chemical manufacturing and petroleum refining. Fourth is coal. Despite being an important fuel source for some industries, the use of coal by the industrial sector has declined since 1950 when it was the largest fraction of industrial fuel inputs to a relatively small fraction of industrial fuel inputs today. Over the same period, use of coal in electric power generation has grown rapidly currently supplying more than 60% of energy inputs for electric power generation and thus represents an important though indirect source of energy for all the three end use categories except in transportation particularly commercial and residential sectors. Then is renewable sources of energy. The industrial sector is a significant user of renewable fuels in part due to the extensive use of biomass fuels in paper and pulp product industry. Thus, there should be urban industrial energy demand of sustainable development as considerable variation is found in the amount of energy used for industrial processes. About 30% of energy is used by USA for industries. In the former Soviet Union, Large deposits of coal, oil and natural gas reserves are available. On account of this reason, steel is processed from ore because energy is readily available. Spain and Italy lack large deposits of fossil fuel necessary for the extraction of oil and natural gas. So, both Italy and Spain produce steel from scrap steel because it needs less energy producing one metric ton of steel from iron or in the former Soviet Union uses as much energy as producing a metric ton of steel from scrap in the Spain or Italy. Large capital investment is required to upgrade the process of industrial production because updated and upgraded machinery and equipment reduce industrial energy consumption. Many countries of the world cannot afford to convert their existing processes due to financial and other constraints. For example, take the case of India, a nation with few coal deposits, still uses the outdated open hearth furnace to produce steel. This process needs double the worldwide energy for producing a metric ton of steel on an average. India being an developing country if unable to change the process to modern methods has to continue to use energy expensive methods. Now let us move towards an important sector that is transport sector. Energy use in transportation sector includes energy consumed in moving people and goods by road, rail, air, water and pipelines. Air transport is the second largest energy consumer after road transport. Transportation systems are essential for trade and economic competitiveness in an increasing globalized world as well as for enhancing standards of living. 
trade and economic activity are most significant factors determining demand for transportation. A more complex set of determinants including travel behavior, land use patterns and urbanization affect demand for passenger transportation along with macroeconomic and fuel market impacts. Now, what will be the use to estimate energy consumption? Analysis of data on energy consumption help to estimate the scale of environmental impacts of energy use, such as air pollution, global warming, and oil pollution. They can be used to monitor the performance of key policies aimed at modifying energy consumption and stimulating energy efficiency. The type and extent of energy related pressures on the environment depends both on the sources of energy and on the total amount of energy consumed. Final energy consumption covers all energy delivered to the final consumer store in, in the, that is in industry, transport, household and other sectors for all energy uses. Thus, from this lecture, it can be concluded that there is a clear need to analyze and understand urban energy systems within the dimensions of some specific factors. Among them, first is sustainability. That is, how much and at what rate is energy consumed and its effect on long-term sustainability. The equality and quantity of available alternative renewable forms of energy and the effect of existing energy use on the global environment as a whole. Second is efficiency. The technology, planning and management of energy systems that will facilitate efficient use of energy for human activity, particularly transportation. And third is equity, the appropriate financial mechanism for research, development and use of finite and alternative energy forms and their equitable distribution for all humankind. With this, we conclude our today's lecture. Hope you have enjoyed and understood it very well. Thank you.